Nomad Cosmetics just launched a new palette. The new destination is Province. They were kind enough to send this to me in PR and I'm so excited because not a lot of palettes have come out recently. So I'm just excited to get a good old palette review down. Now, if you've never heard of Nomad Cosmetics, they are a indie brand and they base their palettes based on locations that they travel, what colors they're inspired by. I think they do a really phenomenal job with the story here. Their color curation are always beautiful so I'm excited to get their new palette so thank you to the Nomad team for sending this my way let's take a look we're also going to take a look at the lip glosses that were sent in this collection yes my hair is slightly damp I'm trying not to put heat on and I was tired of waiting for it to air dry so hopefully by the end of this video my head will be dry but until then so the new province collection is launching July 12th I do have a discount code if you want to use it at checkout it is affiliated meaning I do earn a small commission but you also save some money so like when we in, right but let's just go ahead and take a look at the palette itself so this is the box oh hey <laughs> this is the box that it's going to come in and then of course how cute is this? The destination, Provence, France. The lavender fields are the coordinates and the inspiration. And then you can see the colors right here. If there's anything that you need to take a look at, feel free. It goes on a little bit more about the inspiration here as well. I'm telling you, every detail of the Nomad Cosmetics palettes are really thought out, which is why I love the brand. And then here is the palette itself. It's in cardboard packaging. And then here is the back if you need to take a look. Okay, now this palette, I feel like is really unique. I do not have a color story quite like this because it's cool tone yet so warm. I can see the inspiration from the lavender field and how cute are the embossments so well thought out. This is why I love Nomad Cosmetics. Now, if you don't know my background with Nomad Cosmetics, to me, their formula isn't always the greatest, but I feel like the previous two palettes have been really, really nice. Maybe like one or two shades that I wasn't in love with, so I'm excited to play with this guy today. I wanna do like three looks. First two, just like really playing around with the colors, getting a feel for the formula. And then the final look, I want it to like actually be good, you know, but the first two is just to play around but let's go ahead and get into the swatches I cannot wait it's always got to turn the lights down so that you can truly get a look at this palette how beautiful so as you can see it's a 15 pound palette it looks like we have four metallic shades this one looks a little bit more like a shimmer but the reflective shades are here in the middle row and then you have a really light row and a dark row and I must say I'm obsessed with the layout of this palette I think it's really intuitive for a beginner because obviously Obviously, you have the warmer colors over here, cooler colors over here, purples, blues, reddish berries, pinks. It makes a lot of sense. And then, of course, it goes from light depth to deep depth right here, which is really awesome. Very easy to use. Organized by color family, by finish. I'm very, very impressed with that. This is why I'm going to do such a good job. Let's go ahead and swatch, right? We're going to start off with the pinky row right here. So we'll get rosé. Let me not try and pronounce the names. And I know you guys are nice and try to help me pronounce it, but I'm not going to take in that information. It will go in one ear and out the other. But ooh, look at that. This one seems a little sheer, but I feel like it could look really dimensional on the eyelid. Okay, let's get this row. This one has the most variation in shades. Okay, we get the shimmer and then the macaroons shade. This has like a little bit of a satininess to it. Okay, so far so good. The yellow shades, this shade I'm really excited about. It's gonna have such a fun pop. Ooh, okay, I love this shade. It's really reflective. It almost has like a green reflect to it. And then that sunflowery kind of shade. Okay, let's get into the rows that you guys know I'm the most excited about. The lavender row, first and foremost. Okay, I'm gonna be a harsh critic on this purpley shimmery shade. Okay, that feels nice. Awesome, love that. And then let's go in with this last one. This metal shade looks so nice. Okay. These shades can be difficult to formulate. So far, everything feels really good. So something about the Nomad shimmers that you should know, and this is typical with the ones I've tried, they don't have a super creamy feel to them. They 
do feel a little drier at the touch. So we'll see the application of them. The only shade I'm like unsure of maybe is this one. So we'll take a look at that. We'll make sure that the mattes, particularly the pastels, don't blend away. So that's what we're gonna take a look at. But overall color story wise, everything behind the curation of the palette was so well done. How beautiful. Let's play with one look, one side of the eye. So I wanna play in this row the most. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab Rosé with a Wayne Goss number three brush a little bit of a kickback nothing out of the ordinary I would say and I'm gonna blend this on the inner half of the crease so it's laying down a lot of pigment Wow we'll see how it holds up making sure that it stays throughout the whole time that I'm blending other shades Ooh, but that's impressive we're off to a good start we're gonna go ahead in with this shade right here next I'm gonna use a Mac 217. Who was around on YouTube when the Max 217 was the it brush? It's the only brush people would use to blend. <laughs> okay, this one also is holding its color really nicely, very pigmented. And the only reason why I'm really checking for these light shades that they hold their color is because with the Tokyo palette, I did struggle with those colors kind of blending away. And I really do think Nomad has improved their formula since that palette has launched. It's my job as a reviewer, right? Okay, that looks nice. Let's deepen that up. We're gonna go right next over into macaroons right here. Okay, and I'm gonna put this a little bit lower, not blending it quite as high. And these matte shades, so yes, they do have a little bit of kickback to them, but nothing bad. I would still suggest, you know, maybe not doing your face makeup first. For me, I put my face makeup down because I like a clean canvas, but I don't put any concealer on until after. That's going really nice. I wanna test the black. Really love that there's a black in here so you can get any level of depth that you want. The black is gonna be right in the bottom right corner. The black's a little on the powdery side, so be warned. This is a BK Beauty A504. This was in collaboration with Angie Hot and Flashy. And I got just the tiniest bit. Didn't want to go crazy. And let me get my 217 brush. Kind of blend that in. So I kept it pretty close to the lash line. And then just a little bit, I did a wing out because I like the elongated effect on my eye. And what looks weird now will be cleaned up with the makeup wipe. Don't worry. So this is the shade that I was curious about and I'm just now seeing it has a purple shift to it which is really cool so I'm gonna use a cheap old morphe brush and I just scraped it up okay and this is a typical pattern that I notice with nomad shimmers so with a dry brush not the best application with a finger much better application but this shade again like I said a little bit on the drier side by touch and this has a strong reflection so definitely at least this shade it needs to be applied with a finger so keep that in mind I know a lot of you guys don't mind that though. I'm gonna try with a wet brush now. So I packed on some of the product on my brush. I'm gonna spray with hourglass setting spray. Just what I happen to have near me. I would say the best reflection comes from a wet brush though. So the finger definitely got the color down, but if you go the extra step of wetting the brush, you get a more metallic glazed finish on the lid. Okay, I'm gonna kind of blend my crease colors in with that. So the pink has now faded a little bit, but that happens with all shades. At this point, most of them would have faded. Ooh, wait, I love this look <laughs> did not expect to love it okay my brush is still a little damp so i'm gonna go in this shade right here and i'm gonna go in between the dark crease shades in the outer corner and then again trusty 217 brush and just a little bit more black because i feel like it will blend in with the purple more seamless just right in this outer part of the eye <gasps> yes 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 clean it up the way that I love this look right now. Okay, let me pop on some concealer and we'll do the lower lash. Okay, so here's the look with a little bit of extra black shadow for the liner, which I will say the black does blend out a little bit to be kind of a bluish undertone. So just keep that in mind. That's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just something I notice and happens with black sometimes. I didn't put any falsies on since we're doing another look at. After this but I love this look so excited okay, so let's move on to the next eye I have my kaleidoscope activator on I really want to play with these two rows because 
Shades like these have a tendency to like be a little scary. I think I'll do this in the last look and we'll play mostly with this row right here. So this shade can be very patchy based on other palettes that I've tried. So let's see, just going straight into it, tapping off my brush so that we get a little bit of less mess. Ooh, this is blending really nice. Doesn't look patchy. The Nomad mattes in this palette are kind of kicking butt. Not gonna lie, gonna blend it out, wing it out. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of this shade right here because I haven't used it yet. It kind of feels a little bit more pinky, but it does differ from the light pink on this side. And that's a pretty color to blend out this cool shade right here. Okay, awesome. We're gonna take a little bit of this shade down here and I'm going to press it in the outer half of my lid. Just wanna make sure that this differs from the gray shade and it definitely does. Nice. And then with my BK Beauty brush, we're going back into the black. So we're gonna make this look smoky. And by the way, for the lower lash line on this, I did not do anything special. I literally repeated the same mattes on the lower lash line, a little bit of purple in the center, and then a little bit of the shimmery eyelid color on the inner third of the lower lash line. And the black blends so easy. It's very easy to use. It's not the blackest of black you'll ever use, but it's perfect for just adding a little bit of extra depth and particularly smokiness with the corresponding shade. Okay, taking a Morphe lid brush. I need to see what this guy does on its own completely dry brush so yep needs a finger but if you want kind of that subtle sparkle wash you can use a brush Let's see how a finger does finger packs it on a lot better like you can get a very satisfying amount of product on the eyelid but yes brush is the way to go with the shimmers here wet brush gives it a really metallic finish to the eyelid if that's what you want Ooh, I'm really into this look here I'm going to put on some concealer and I'm literally gonna repeat what I did on top down here and you'll see this color on the inner half of the lower lash line. Okay, here is the second look. It got a little patchy on my under eye because my eye was watering. It looks a little weird right there. I don't know why other than that my eye got a little watery, but other than that, everything looks super good. Everything blended really great. Just the shimmers need a little extra love. Let's test out all of the lip glosses that launched in the collection, and then we'll finish off with like a whole complete look. But we have four lip glosses. Look how pretty and dimensional that they are. So this is the box that they are all going to come in. Okay, let's just do some lip swatches, right? Let's start off with the darkest one. This is Lavande. She's Dark. Yes, I do have the lights down low so that you can see. Ooh, wow. She's pigmented. If you have a good base underneath, wow, this really builds up. That's crazy. It can sheer out or it can build up. It's not like the smoothest or the most moisturizing feeling, but I'm surprised at how much pigment you can get with this. Okay, so that's this one. I probably won't use that one a lot personally. Let's try this one, which is just a little bit lighter. This is Les Etes. I don't know. The words are really small. I can't really see, nor can I pronounce. Okay. Ooh, wow. This is crazy. This looks like a Cleo Notage shadow in a lip gloss. These are a bit out there for me, but this, the reflection that you see in the component itself is what you get on the lips, which in of itself is very, very respectable. Because usually, <laughs> It's kind of crazy. It literally looks like in the component how it does on the lips. I'm impressed with that. I wouldn't say I love the consistency of these glosses, but the way that they look is so cool. Next up, this is Rosé. So Rosé, take a look. It's a little bit more on the hot pink side. Let's see. So this one has more of a metallic finish as opposed to like glittery or sparkly. They certainly go with the palette. And again, really opaque. Very much so. Let's go with the color that I'm actually gonna wear a lot. This is Miel. This by far is the most wearable shade, so let's see how it looks. I know I have some residue on my lips, but still, these are all quite pigmented that it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is by far the most toned down. It still has a metallic finish to it, but it has the least pigmented base. So I'll probably use this in the next look so you can kind of see how it would look layered over. But yeah, it's not like the most comfortable moisturizing gloss feel, but I feel like it's gonna last a long time. Okay, let me take my makeup off and we'll get a pretty look now. Okay, so I know the look's not looking so hot here. <laughs> 
It will come together, I promise. I have plans. I'm going to attempt to do this eye a wee bit different than how I did the other eye. I'm okay with bringing this eye primer low because I got some blue there. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the lavender shade. I didn't do that on the other eye. I started with the yellow first, but I don't think I like this color. I think it blends away really easily, but just to test that theory, I'm putting it down first as opposed to being a second layer to see if it sticks to the eyelid and holds on better but I layered a yellow underneath my entire crease for this look on the other eye and the purple shade I just had to do about a hundred layers I had to keep going in if my eyes look a little irritated that's because they are they do not do well with doing multiple looks <laughs> in one day that's why I normally don't but I'm feeling excited here's the other shade that I'm not sure about this highlighty yellow color so this is the color that I used first I'm gonna put this on the inner half of the crease so you can see it does not really show up on my skin tone nor does it hold its own once other shades go on top so I'm gonna try and kind of blend it out over the lavender yeah I'm not in love with this shade there's use for it I'm not saying it's a useless shade but it doesn't give me what I was hoping for it's just very sheer and takes a lot of building which is what I was scared of it's already looking better than it did on the other eye though the lavender shade did not layer well over another eyeshadow the lavender shade works best when put on the bare lid so I wouldn't layer with that and because I I want more yellow I'm going in with the darker yellow shade right here and this gave me the yellow that I was looking for you can see there's so much more pigment it gives me the impact that I was looking for so I'm not in love with the two pastel shades that I used for this look Mac 217 and we're going into this color right here do you like this shade I'm gonna use it in the outer I don't know like wing of the eye so I'm pressing it against the lash line and then blending it up and you can see the lavender is already starting to disappear I mean this is a common thing with lavender shades you know it's not just nomad but it's always something I like to look out for this dark shade though is really nice again let's pack on the lavender then we're going in with this shade next I'm not even gonna waste time we're gonna wet the brush and Press that in the inner half of the eyelid. Now, as you can see, it has a really strong green shift, but it is so pretty. If these shimmer shades weren't so pretty, I would totally fault them for needing to be wet. But because of how they look on the eyelid, I'm not mad. I'm gonna work on building up the colors again. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the steps on my lower lash line. Just have a little bit of yellow and a little bit of purple in the outer corner. I'll show you the final look. All right, guys, I will admit my lash choice was a bit extreme today. I have not been wearing lashes of this nature recently and I forgot how dramatic these are. I used to wear these so much in college. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but they're already glued on so we're sticking with it But if you can see behind my lashes the look turned out so pretty So for a lip gloss over top, I chose the shade Miel the natural shade now, These lip glosses are kind of crazy in a good way. Maybe I don't know but oh, that's pretty I like how it made the lips look metallic I have on the Maybelline lip vinyl in the shade cheeky underneath so there we have it three looks with the new province collection from nomad cosmetics so my final thoughts on this palette I would say it's pretty on par with the rest of my feelings about the nomad palette there's usually a few shades that I'm like eh about so for me the only two shades that I'm eh about are these two right here they kind of blend away I don't get too much from them and then the shimmers just be aware that you do need to wet a brush that could be a pro or a con depending who you are but other than that nothing but positives to say about the palette really easy to blend stunningly beautiful color story I don't think it's an overpriced palette either and I mean what sets Nomad apart in my opinion from other brands to warrant a purchase is the story behind the eyeshadow palette and their beautiful color curations it's not my favorite palette I'm still into Paradise Islands a little bit more from Nomad that one is like my true summer palette but this this one is still really cool. I love the options it gave and I was obsessed with all three looks that I came up with. The lip glosses, honestly, they are not for me. <laughs> They're just a little bit too bold for my preferences. I don't see these being colors that I'd wear often. However, this shade right here, the glittery one, while I don't know that I'd ever wear it, it is one of the most insane glitter glosses ever. Like one of the best quality glitter glosses ever. I've never seen a gloss look so glittery on the lips. Literally just how glittery it looks in the component. 
Mm, if you kind of mix it with another gloss, it's a little less crazy looking. Anyways, really great formula on this one for sure. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. I will have my discount code linked right here if you want to use it at checkout and of course the link to the palette. Thank you so much for watching this video and liking it and subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.